Okay. Okay. Well, um, this is my connection project. I called it the breathing bench. Um, I did my project about the benches outside of the STEM center. If you had told me a year ago that I would be doing a project about that, those particular benches, I would not have believed you. But um, it's been a hard year and we've been trying to appreciate every little thing we have in our lives. And I chose those benches because um, we've been stuck inside because of the fires. And that was the first day where it was semi okay to breathe outside. And I went to campus and I sat outside, had a little breakdown. It hits differently on campus. And it felt good. It felt good being on campus. It felt good being back over there. And it made me a little nostalgic. I hated going to Cabrillo like seven days a week, but then I really miss going to Cabrillo seven days a week. So it felt appropriate. And Joanne, actually, thank you, Joanne, for helping me choose the bench to do a project on. And um, I, I'm doing my project, my connections, I'm focusing on this, um, on this pin over here and this over there. And they're called, the connection are a smooth pin and a bracket and a, and a pin, the right, those two, let me zoom in. There's gonna be three reactions in the X, uh, actually five reactions in each, the uh, force in the X and the Y and the Z, a moment in the Y and a moment in the X. And same thing in this little pin, there's gonna be also three, uh, five reactions, uh, forces in the Y, the X and the Z, the moment in the Y and the moment in the X. Okay. And Good that's morning. it. Yeah, that's it. So again, show your photo, say why you chose it, and then mention what the connections are and what the reactions are. Okay, so Jordan, you're up. I don't see Jordan. Uh, Eric. Hi, good morning. Okay, there you are. So share your screen. Okay. So I did mine on my dog. Um, I got him two days before the semester started. So I got him at six weeks old from my sister who her dog had uh, a litter and um, wasn't really sure if I you know, could handle a dog. So I justified getting one for my sister because if it didn't work out, I'd give it back. But that kind of sounds ridiculous now. So yeah, this is him. Um, his name's Bradley. He, um, he is, he has, his reactions vary a lot. He's very unstable. Um, he has probably normal forces at his feet and tension at his collar. And um, so he has a Y component from the normal force and an X component from friction. And yeah, and I, okay. there's my drawing. Wow, and, nice uh, drawing. Wow. Thank you. It took me a long time to do that. Well, not a long time. It just took me a while to figure out how to get it on paper, yeah. PDF. Yeah, no, that's, so, uh, it's good practice. All right. Well, yeah. thanks, Eric. You're welcome. Okay. Daniel C. Uh, Joanne Jordan will be here in a minute. She didn't see the new Zoom link. Oh, okay. Okay. Thanks for contacting her. Am I still going or are we waiting? Yeah, no, you oh. go. Okay. Let me go get my... How do, I, how do I do this? Oh, me too. And share. Can you so see again, my show your photo, why you chose it, and then tell us about the connections and the supports. All right. It says I'm sharing a screen. Can you see this? Yeah. Oh, okay. So at the beginning of the year, I got a throat infection and I went into the doctors and part of their whole checkup process is that they have to take your measurements and they weigh you. And I found out I weighed around like 220. And one of my goals for the year was to lose weight, um, primarily body, uh, visceral body fat. And uh, because of the COVID, my local gym actually closed for most of the year. And so I was left uh, without a gym to work out at. And thanks to my dad, who is a complete health nut uh, and 
we worked out a new physical workout plan where we would um, like work out every single day, run up to UCSC, do weights every single day. I would work out at least an hour and a half a day. Uh, we also changed our diets. If I scroll up here, uh, one of the things that we eat is that he got fascinated by pumpkin brownies and it's just brownies made out of pure pumpkin puree. On the bottom left, I have this uh, new ice cream thing, which is primarily just sanit gum and fruit and protein powder. And so you know, that's pretty much just been my entire year just working out every day. And that's why I chose the pull-up bar, which is one of the devices that I use um, basically to work out when my gym was closed. And so each, the reactions are at the uh, pin joints over here and they're completely fixed. So we have moments in the X, Y, and Z. We also have uh, reactions in the X, Y, and Z as well. And it only happens at those four points. And it takes a load um, at the bar point here and where the hand grips are. And at the hand grips part as well, there's uh, two uh, forces applied. There's a normal force from the wall, from the door frame, and from my grip as well. And that's why I chose the pull-up bar. Okay, thanks, Daniel. Welcome. Okay, Joanna, Peter. why are we not showing the drawings that show <laughs> the reactions? Because we only have two minutes, and I think the we're going to be able to understand more from a photo than the drawings that you did. Yeah. And I'll get to look at the drawings at some point mm -hmm. when I go through the grading. But right now, to go through it, I think the photos are help more helpful. Okay, Peter. Okay, sure. Oh, and Jordan, we'll have you go next. Okay, here we go. Um, so what I chose, uh, I chose my driver for my golf bag. I've um, been going, uh, me and my dad go golfing all the time. He took me to the driving range for the first time when I was three. Uh, and I had a ping driver. It was an adult club that he took and cut down so it would fit me and um it's just it's kind of been our thing growing up has always been sports um but golf has been consistent since i was a little kid up until now he comes to all my tournaments um i did a lot of work in the golf industry and it's made me a lot of great friends and great connections in the world um so in terms of the club having physical connections there's that but it's also made me some connections in my life as well. Um, so in the second picture here, you can see the hosel, uh, right? I don't know if you can see my mic, uh, my mouse hovering. Yes, here. we can. Yeah, okay, yes. great. So there's a, this is a fixed support here. So it has reaction, reaction forces in the X, Y, and Z, and then also moment reactions in the X, Y, and Z as well. And then on the fourth picture here, there is a weight in the back, which is as you know, technology has advanced, they've started messing with weight, uh, weight distribution so that everyone can kind of get a fit to that matches their swing. Um, so there is the center point here, and then there's another hole on this end at the end of the slot, and then one on th this end as well. And so that's a pin connection and how you change it between the three points is you have a tool and if you look at my camera here, you can see this tool. You take the tool, you unscrew the pin and then you play, you basically slide the weight into the other spot and then you screw the pin back in. And so then that has the um, force in the X and Y as well as the moment. Thanks, Peter. Yeah. Okay, Jordan. Jordan, I'm sorry. Still uh, for the, because this was originally supposed to be finals week, I had only put the Zoom calls out to last week. And that's why you couldn't find it. So then I had to add on just this morning. So yeah, Isaac just sent it to platform. me. Sorry about that. I'm still no. getting my iPad on because I don't have it on my computer. Oh, okay. Well, I'll, let us know when. I'll just keep going, okay? Okay. I couldn't go after the next person if that's all right. Okay. Laura, Laura, you're next. Okay, good morning. So I chose um, a soccer goal, which I titled the goal of soccer. 
And I chose it because um, I have been playing soccer since high school and due to the pandemic, we everything is closed, so we're not allowed to play. But not only do I play, um, I also coach soccer. So I'm actually at this field probably uh, two to three times a week uh, after work or school. I come here and I coach girls, I volunteer. And so that's why I chose it. I kind of miss it a lot. Um, some of my, some of the things that I've done is, uh, I started off coaching when I came back. I coached here at Watsonville High School and I've also played for Cabrillo and I played at the university level. But besides that, the first soccer team that I had with a group of girls, we've been friends for, I mean, we're still friends up to now. Some of them have become um, family. One of them married my cousin. So she's like my sister-in-law and we just all get together and we have a big soccer team called the Fremily and we do a lot of things together. We go to tournaments and it's just a lot of fun and it's all the family. So it's like we've grown up together throughout the years. So that's why I picked it. Um, here's a stock photo that I found because I couldn't, you couldn't really see it in the other picture and the high school's locked, so I couldn't go take a picture of it. But you, you have the reactions here at the wheels, which is used to prop up the goal in order to easily move it around the field. And so the only movement it has is uh, front, like in this direction. So um, you have a reaction in the A, Y, and Z direction. You don't have to show moments. your drawing. Laura, you don't have to show your drawing because no one else is. So you did the um the goal post or the goal, the goal, yeah. I guess, right? Yeah. Yes. Okay, cool. Specific. All right. Thank you, Laura. Okay. Jordan, are you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Okay, you could go. All right, I have my, um, I made a bench over quarantine. It's kind of been something I've been doing to keep myself sane and busy. I kind of always have to have something to do, but it's really cool. It's actually convertible. This is a picture that I took kind of late at night. So there is a hinge on the bench. And the hinge is the reaction that I did. I did this point where it attaches. So the top attaches to the bottom area. And the bottom area is the bench and then the top is the tabletop. And I kind of had to improvise a little bit on a few things, but I found a really cool design and I got really into it and I learned a lot. I managed to get help from a friend who like lent me some extra tools and everything. And I finally have an outdoor study space. The hinge right here has reactions in the X, Y, and Z, but doesn't have the moment around what I put in my diagram as my Z axis. Okay. Thanks, Jordan. Very clever design. I love it. Yes, that. really neat. Thank you. Okay, Luis. Uh, hey, Joanne. Yeah. Um, so mine was kind of similar to Laura's, to be honest. Um, I also okay. did the post. Um, mine was a little different, though. So yeah. Let me show you. Um, same thing. I mean, it's just one of those things where you kind of get together with friends and family, and it's really hard and right now that you can't really do that. So um, I did a goal post as well. I did a tension back here. Um, same thing, the reactions right there at the wheels. Um, and then sometimes I have pins up top as well. Um, that was kind of my goal. I mean, I grew up playing soccer um, as well as for the schools and stuff. So uh, yeah, it's just different times right now. Um, I, did, I did that one, but there's also like the little one for the little kids. So. Uh, same thing, I also coached and stuff. So uh, that's something that you miss for sure. Um, yeah, I mean, <laughs> Laura kind of summarized it, which was yeah. pretty funny. Um, okay. That was, that was like a perfect seg segue onto mine as well. Yeah. Okay, thank you, Luis. 
next. Uh, okay, Victoria. Welcome. Yes. Okay, there you are. Okay, so can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. So I did uh, my grandfather's bench, so I have the grandfather right here, but uh, the bench. Um, so my grandfather, probably like a year or two ago, he retired from picking berries. So since he had worked like pretty much his whole life when he came over here from Mexico, so um, he didn't really know how to um, like stay in the house. He kind of was like really at all times. Um, so he started off making like um, bracelets and necklaces. Let me actually turn on my video. I don't know if you guys can see me. But like I have this one so he like made us all like necklaces and braces so this is where he started like doing stuff but then um kind of got tired of like just making the same old braided bracelets so then he got into like making wooden bowls and like wooden um cups and then my grandma got tired of him making wooden cups and wooden bowls so then he went into making benches for all the grandkids and all his kids so this is my specific bench it like has my initials in the center it's like specific towards me and um it's held by a lot of glue like I don't really <laughs> sit on it but um like he has like the four main screws on the on the corners but then like he like glued stuff on top so you wouldn't see the screws and so, um, so I did the screws had forces in the X, Y, and Z, and then moments on the X, Y, and Z, because it's just holding a lot of force on each floor. But yeah, even these supports right here, they're just glued on. <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> okay, thanks, Victoria. Okay, Daniel Hall. Hi. Um, so let me do this. Okay, so my project is on um, the shelf uh, right in front of my desk. It holds up my two monitors. Um, the reason I picked this shelf is just that, you know, it's, it's actually had a lot of meaning to me. I built it like with my dad and um, there's not a whole lot of things that we get to do together. Um, but as well as my computer setup, it's just usually where I'm at for the most part. Um, so my shelf is what I picked. It has two fixed supports right under it. Um, and so with that, and got to represent the Ys, <laughs> um, but it holds up my two monitors. Um, wow, they're and, huge monitors. Yeah. <laughs> um, wow. So with there being two connections, uh, each each at the fixed supports, it has moments in all three directions as well as um, forces acting on them in all three directions. And then, oh, but that's not that part. But um, yeah, so this shelf was just something that I was able to build with my dad and um, we were able to set it up together. I just had a lot of issues with desk space as you can see with the monitor size, but um, so once we were able to do that um, and get through that, that situation, then um, his shelves really had a lot of meaning to me. Okay, thank you, Daniel. Yeah. Okay, Hioji's next. All right, Jack. Hello. Hello. Okay, so I did my project on, I guess it's technically a baby gate, but we use it as a dog gate. Um, so this is it right here. It's got two hinges on the top and the bottom, which allow, or has reactions at both in the X, Y, and Z, and then moments in what I said was the X and the Z. Um, but basically, 
the significance of the gate is that I got it because I got um, my puppy Cleo um, about a year ago. Um, and so Cleo had parvo, which if you have had dogs is like a pretty gnarly viral disease that basically destroys the lining of their intestines. Um, and it's like pretty, has a pretty high mortality rate. So we weren't even planning to get her. We just met her. Um, and then her friend called us and told us that um, she had parvo and she was probably going to die if we didn't get her. So we, on the 4th of July, drove to Sacramento and picked up the sick puppy that we have now um, and went and got her treatment. And if we hadn't, then she probably would have died because I'm pretty sure every other puppy in the litter died. So um, if we didn't get Cleo, we wouldn't have the gate. So that's the connection there. But um, yeah. Okay. Thank you, Jack. I'm glad your dog's still with you. Yeah, she's 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 a lot. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Dave. I don't know if I can follow sick dog, but all right. <laughs> um, let's see here. Yes, I can. Um, we'll go here. Um, let's see. This is a picture frame I keep on my desk. It is of my father. Uh, it's a picture of him when he was working at Merrill Lynch. Uh, he worked first as a stockbroker for like 30 years or something. And um, he passed away a couple of years ago. And I, when I, growing up, I knew him as like a really kind of serious, straight-laced, working in an office all day kind of guy. But after, after he passed, I heard all these stories about him being a goofball at the office. And so I, I have this picture to, to kind of remind me of both sides of him, that he was actually kind of a fun guy and he was a character. And I hear about all these wacky things he did at parties and stuff. So it's kind of, kind of nice to, to hear that. So the picture is a convincing cutout of Elvira. I guess he took that during Halloween in his office. And it was something that he did. Uh, he, he would like celebrate all the big holidays in his office with all kinds of decorations and stuff. So I keep the picture to, uh, to remind me. Um, on the back, there's a hinge. Um, it is a just a regular hinge right there. So it has, uh, let's see, three of the uh, linear force reactions and two of the uh, moment reactions. And um, yeah, and then it would have a weight down, normal up. There you go. And I keep it, you can see it on my camera. It's right up there. I keep a little uh, kind of shrine to him like an ofrenda with some objects of his and a uh, picture and stuff above my desk. Nice, Dave. There you go. Yeah, thanks. Thank you mm -hmm. for sharing. Okay, Jason. Jason who? Uh, Jason me. Okay. Me. All right, let's do this. Yeah, so. it's funny. You guys are alphabetized by both first name and last name. Jason <laughs> Lee and Jason Lavoie. Yeah, I was kind of wondering oh. about that. All right, um, so y'all can hear me? Yeah. Great, so this is my project. I um, wanted to um, help out my housemates. You know, we've always been looking for a place to uh, hang out. And I mean that literally just, you know, people wanting to be able to stretch and sort of play on a, um, on a, on a bar someplace to hang from is actually kind of hard to come by in houses unless you make an explicit point of, of creating it. So I, uh, we picked a location and I designed this bracket that would um, be able to support a bar uh, on an outside beam underneath the, an awning, sort of a porch. And I, it was one of the first sort of practical projects of, of um, my new welder. So I was excited about that and just an opportunity to, and it just went remarkably quickly. I was just like from design to uh, installation, it was like turnaround of like several hours. Um, so I was really excited about how I was like, wow, that's fucking power. And oops, pardon me. And here's, oh, um, here is the uh, installed, um, Here's the installed uh, bracket and you can see the bar and you can see the, um, there is a screw, it's a safety screw. Honestly, the, uh, you know, you kind of look at this and the, um, 
the reactions. This is actually a better picture to, to look at forces. So we, um, I see it as a normal force in the Y. Um, all right, you know, a normal force in this direction, a normal force in this direction, um, and a normal force in this direction. So if you think about the load pathways, if the weight is here of the bar, then it transfers through here in tension. This member is in tension. And then this sort of hooks on the back of the bar like you know you would do with your fingers if you were trying to hold onto it yourself. This, of course, is in compression. So this part of it, um, to me, uh, has is all two force members. And then this one um, resists the moment of the whole structure pivoting about this point. Um, so that is. Um, that's what we end up with here. And I did put that safety screw in there. It's really not taking much of a shear at all. It's really designed not to take any force there, but it's a in case you push up on the bar and just lodge the hook in the back. I wanted to make sure that that condition was impossible. There you go. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for sharing. OK, Jason Lee. Yes. Uh, let me make sure. Hi, and today I'm going to talk about my modified Mazda RX-3 Hot Wheels uh, die cast. <laughs> it's pretty cool. <laughs> um, I first decided to write about this because this is my um, beginning of my Hot Wheel collection. I got addicted after buying this special um, car model because this is like one in the world that a person actually made it by hand. Like if you can see the picture, this car actually has a carbon fiber hood and wide body kit. And um, the rims are off market. Um, if you look closer, you can actually see the disc brake inside of the wheels. And I gotta turn on my video, um, video so I can show you guys they are roll cage um, at the back of the car. And how do I turn on my video? Like, if you guys can see that, there's our, there are roll cage inside the back of a car. And then the interior are detailed, but I don't know if you guys, yeah. you guys can see the color. Yeah. Not. So this car is very special to me, and there are um, four rollers considering the wheels, and that's the only force I can think about besides the weight. So there are four normals supporting the little car, and thank you. Okay, thanks, Jason. Okay, David. Um, okay, I also chose a picture frame of my grandparents. I've carried this picture frame everywhere I go and I've switched my room a couple of times, different rooms in the house and I always have it with me. Um, we actually lost our grandpa earlier this year and um, um, when you said think of something to be thankful about, I it really reminded me of how we were able to visit him in the hospital because it happened right before COVID. So we, we could actually um, go inside and spend some time with him. And um, we wouldn't be able to do that now. Uh, I've seen a lot of things people just like, I guess, go alone in the hospital and, and never get to see their family members. Mm -hmm. So I'm just glad I was able to um, say, I guess, goodbye to him and talk to him. And uh, I just have like some pictures right here of of my grandparents, of me when I was younger. And the only support is a small pin in the back over here with the reactions in the X, Y, and Z. And yeah, that are pretty much it. David, is your grandma still alive? Yeah, she is. Oh, that's nice. She's here with us. Great. Okay, thank you, David. Uh -huh. Oh, and is it your mom's parents or your dad's parents? Uh, it's my mom's. Mom's parents, okay. Yeah. Okay, Tim, you're up next. Yeah. Um, 
Okay, so uh, this year being 2020, normally for a project like this, I would pick my mountain bike because I mountain bike a lot and I enjoy it a lot. And uh, but this year I actually picked my helmet and about four weeks into this semester, I went out for a bike ride as I commonly do. And uh, as I thankfully uncommonly do, crashed and this particular morning crashed into a tree pretty good and ended up getting a concussion and kind of dealing with some health stuff for a few weeks after that. And, but anyways, so yeah, my, my item that I chose for 2020 for this project was the helmet. And cause even though I got a concussion, it could have been way worse in what happened. And um, essentially like with the helmet, you have a, you have reactions in the X, Y, and Z. And this helmet, you'll notice that little like yellow dot on it says MIPS. It's actually this rotational liner that allows movement of the helmet um, a few degrees in every direction so that its whole point is to dissipate force when you're hitting the ground, hitting a tree in my case, um, that it actually gives, uh, it's supposed to slow down the inertia, right? Or, or stretch out that time over which the, the force is acting on your brain. Uh, so it still has a distributed normal force that is basically all over your head. And, and then the chin strap keeps it from being able to uh, be pulled off in the Z as well. And that is my object. Thanks. Yeah. Tim, you know that there's a company in Scotts Valley that makes helmets for sports, right? Yes, Bell Giro. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay, thank you. All right, Myra, your turn. Okay, are you guys able to see this? Yes. Okay, yeah. so this, um, this is uh, very special to me because a year ago in June, uh, I traveled myself, my daughter and three other cousins traveled to Hawaii. Um, and that was our first time on a plane, uh, my daughters and I. So I was trying not to freak out and have her be scared. I was definitely <laughs> nervous. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, it was an awesome time. Um, it was really nice out there. And we had actually um, planned to go this year. And then, of course, 2020 surprised us. Um, but yeah, it only has a connection in the back, um, uh, X, Y, and Z, to where we can hang it from, and a normal from the wall. Okay. So this is something on your wall. This isn't a surfboard, right? No, well, it's in the shape of a surfboard, right, but it's right. smaller, yeah, and it's on my wall. Yeah, and how tall is it? It's, um, I forget, it was on my, it's maybe, I want to say, maybe 20 inches or so. Okay, so it's yeah. pretty big. Yeah, it's it's a good size. Yeah, okay. Yeah. All right, thank you. Hopefully, you'll be able to go next year. Yeah, I hope so, too. I think too. 2021 is going to be a good year. Well, it better be. <laughs> OK, um, Liam. So we can't hear you, Liam. You're still not muted. All right, can you hear me? Yeah, so we can right. now. So this is the item I chose. This is a uh, banner from the uh, Stanford Stadium that my grandmother got me. Who uh, That is my cousin who played uh, quarterback there for Stanford for a few years. And um, so it's just nice to have it. That uh, family, we went to see him a couple times as a family play there. And then we took we went down to Arizona to also see him play, mm. which was an interesting time. It was fun. Uh, and so there's only just one reaction at the top with a wooden dowel to hang it, which acts as a journal bearing. So you've got reactions in the Y and the Z direction towards you and moments about both those two axes. So it's connected on the wall on both ends of the dowel. Is that right? Yeah. Yes. Okay, great. 
Well, thanks, Liam. Okay, Marcin's next. Hi, um, I did, let me share my screen and I actually have something. I did my project <clears throat> on my cat tree. Here she is. <laughs> um, I don't know if you guys have heard her whining during class sometimes, but yeah, it's, she cries a lot, but she's been really important to me during this quarantine because um, I had recently, well, it's been a bit now, but I had lost a cat that has been, that has grown up with me my entire life. And we've been waiting for a long time to get another cat because it just didn't feel right. But then like an opportunity rose and a family friend was giving away a cat and she looks just like my previous cat. So it's kind of crazy and nostalgic. Mm -hmm. And this is a part of her cat tree that I analyzed and she loves laying in this little nest. So the connections are at the top and the bottom of this pole right here. There's pin connections here. And then right here where the like nest connects to the pole, um, it acts as a hinge connection because it can spin around. Wow. And yeah, it's just been, we've bonded a lot over quarantine too because I'm home all day and I don't think she's gonna like it when we things get back to normal and she discovers I can't be with her 24 hours a day. <laughs> but yeah, that's, my project. Marcine, what's the diameter of the bowl shaped part? I believe it is six. Oh, the diameter is 12 inches. 12 inches. Okay. Yeah, that's a good size for a cat to lay in. <laughs> yeah. She assumes you're home to be with her. I mean, you know that, right? <laughs> I just bring her everywhere after quarantine. <laughs> we could set it up in room 810. <laughs> okay. Thanks, Marcine. Mm -hmm. Okay, Edgar. You're on. Yes, 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 yes. One second. Uh, there it is. All right, just ignoring the taps. Um, so Edgar, would you put your volume up? <clears throat> yeah, it's not the volume, it's my microphone that sucks. Oh, so okay. Just okay. letting you know, you are the fifth first of the semester who has told me that about the microphone. Oh, sorry oh, about that. <laughs> That's okay. So I just choose a, a photograph frame that I have um, in my computer desk. Um, this is a, a photo of my, my parents, my older brother who's in the army and that little destroyer that I call my nephew. Uh, he's just a rebel guy. Uh, I choose this photo because since we have been in quarantine the last couple months, um, one of the things that I started to, and I should have done this all my life, but more especially to, uh, this during this time, uh, the importance of the family because usually I spend most of my time in Cabrillo like five days a week, all the way to the morning to night, and I barely get to see them, and not even talk about my brother, who is not even here in California. He lives in Georgia with his family, um, and he recently got deployed to Poland, so he's hoping he's coming back at some point. And so every single time when I get to a point where I don't know what I'm, what am I doing with my life, or what do I want to go with, with it, uh, just look at the picture. It's like okay, my parents, uh, they just give away the, the comfortable life back in my old country, Mexico. And they decided to move on here to give us a better opportunity and able to get a school, get a better education, a uh, better, uh, uh, better job, which is something that they couldn't get back in, in Mexico. So, so that's the reason why I try to pursue a high degree education. Mm -hmm. And my brother who used to be a person who made a lot of uh, bad decisions during his youth times, he didn't know what to do, what to do with his life. And, he decided to take a military path and here it is right now. Uh, he got recently upgraded. To, he got ranked up to a uh, sergeant and he, now he's super happy with his life. And he realized that there is, it's never late to make changes in your life and be happy with your decisions. So that's a picture. And the reactions I have at the back, there is a hinge. So it's not, uh, it's not on, on the wall, but it's on the table. So there is a distributed normal force along the, the front side of the of the frame and also there is the small like on the back side there is another normal and there is a weight component because this is a glass and glass is kind of pretty heavy so so yeah and uh then the hinge the hip supports um forces and the xyz components and two moments one on the x no sorry one on the y and one on the c based on the um axis that i chose for this thing 
but yeah, there it is. And that's the picture. Right. I'm sure your parents are really proud of you. Yeah. <laughs> and you I do know. look a little like your brother. I see a resemblance. <laughs> I literally thought you just got ripped over the semester. And I was just like, <laughs> <laughs> No, I actually grooved, but from the that wasn't you the sides. <laughs> no, dude. I wish. <laughs> okay, thanks, Edgar. Okay, Tony, you're up. Probably earlier than you thought. Right. Yeah? yeah, a little bit. Um, so let's just go ahead and jump right into it. Yeah. Okay. All right. So <laughs> mine is nowhere near as wholesome as some of the other ones, but I mean, this is this is what I got. This is what I got. <laughs> So I decided to do my project on uh, my glasses. Now, normally, as anybody with some sense would uh, would try to do, they try to get your glasses uh, diamond encrusted, as you will. But I'm a little low on sense and a little lower on cash, so I went with a more moderate appearance of these uh, these brown frames. Um, so let's talk about the uh, let's talk about the uh, the reason why I chose this, I guess. Um, so I, I pretty much. I guess my, my vision is something that I kind of underappreciate. And so this is kind of just like a testament to, to basically that, you know, like uh, I, I don't really appreciate my, uh, my vision as much as I should. So I thought I may as well, hey, just do something that I carry around with me all the time. So let's talk about the uh, reactions from there. So it's not immediately apparent, but um, this is, the reactions are actually kind of symmetrical about the, uh, the bridge of the nose. So you have the same reactions on the left-hand side as you would on the right-hand side. You got the reactions at the pins right here. And so on those rubber pads, it's actually uh, not immediately apparent, but it's a uh, ball and socket joint. So the, um, the pads can rest easily on your nose. And then also right here, there's, um, it's not immediately apparent, but this is like a pin that, that's used to keep the lenses in place. And then, so it doesn't allow for any reactions in the, uh, in the uh, or excuse me, it doesn't allow for any moments about the X, Y, or Z, or, but it does have reactions in the X, Y, or Z so that the, uh, so it keeps the lenses in place. And then of course, there's this one that allows for the hinges about the, uh, it's, it's like a hinge thing that allows for, I guess, a moment about the Z so that the, uh, I don't know, what would you call them? The, the frames can like wrap around your, uh, I don't know, go over years. <laughs> so yeah, that's uh that's pretty much total of total of six reactions. And then like I said, it's symmetrical about that bridge of the nose. So it's just those three. It's the same thing on the other side. So that just pretty much covers it. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Tony. Yeah. Okay, Angel. All right. Good morning. Good morning. Okay, so here I have my project. Now my project is actually uh, this thing, this little module here, the black device. And you can see there, uh, the name of it is Fretrest. So it is just a mount for you to uh, hang your guitar on on the wall. And uh, so this is significant to me because I've been playing guitar since about my, I think it was Christmas of my freshman year, I was given a guitar, and it, it's the black guitar there I have um, right here. Freshman year of high school? Of high school, yes. Okay. So I've been playing it since then, and I was always told that I have to like store um, my guitars and like guitar cases and all that, and I, um, well, I used to go to Guitar Center quite a bit, so not, and I'd always see the guitars hanging on the side, and I think, well, wouldn't it be better to just have them hanging so then I could always just have them available to play and it took me a while but I eventually found these wall mounts and I really like them and they just kind of added like a little bit of a, a more musical atmosphere into my room so um, yeah I have these two guitars I have one bass guitar that I think is a little bit too heavy to be hanging from the wall and it, it's not as symmetric with the other guitars but these are the two guitars I like to display. And the two connections I considered are these screws that are um, located at this location and at this location. And I labeled them as fixed supports. So they resist forces in the F and the, the Y, X, and Z. 
and they also resist the moments in the X, Y, and Z. So for each support, that would be uh, six and six. So that would come down to a total of 12 supports. And that is my project. Thank you, Angel. Thank you. Okay, Maria. <clears throat> Good morning. Let me uh, just a second. Wait. All right. So this is my project. Um, I called it raft frame connections and significance. This is me in my happy place on my raft in in the canyon. This is the Green River in Colorado. Um, so I cho chose to do my project on this raft frame of this raft because I've been rafting ever since I was five, almost every summer, at least one or two multi-state trips in the summer. Um, I learned how to raft from my uncles and who started rafting like in the 70s. And this is just a picture of my, all my uncles and my dad and my sister and they gave my sister her first her frame for her boat when she graduated from high school um and i got my first raft when i was 18. this is my raft uh her name is rainbow baby <laughs> and uh i'll explain the connection so i chose to focus on like if i were to take these center two bars out in the seat then this would just be a frame and so these connections of these center bars on the outer frame are a smooth um, a smooth collar on, or a collar on a smooth shaft. And so the reactions that happen are two reaction, two force reactions and two moment reactions. Um, the way I drew it was like forces in the X and Z and moments in the X and Z. And then two normal forces where the seat of the raft goes down on the back of the frame. And the frame is important because without the frame, the boat is just basically a paddle boat. And the frame is what allows you, you put the oars in these two oar locks right here. And it's what allows you to row the boat. And it's also what you strap all of your gear to. So right here, this is a light load. But you can kind of see in, in this picture, you usually put like the gear behind you on the raft. And so raft trips, basically you spend like a few days on the river with all of your gear going down the river, going through rapids. And then at night, you camp along the side of the river and you have everything with you that you need and you're in the middle of nowhere and you're disconnected from society for a couple of days. And it's the best feeling in the world. <laughs> and so, yeah, that's why I chose it for my project. Thank you very much. Thank you, Maria. Awesome. Okay, Colin. Um. Okay, and then Hyoji, you'll be up next. Colin, you're muted. Oh, there. Okay, good. Okay. Um, so I did mine on a desk that has been in my family for a very long time. Can you share your screen, Colin? Oh, am I not doing that? Sorry. No, I don't see. Oh, that. I forgot to click share. Okay. Okay. Um, Thank you. Yeah, so it's this desk. Uh, Hang on, we don't see it yet. Okay. Um, we still don't see the photo, but we see my family desk. Okay, sorry, that's making my computer like freak out. I yeah, it's okay, just scan it up. Okay, great, thanks. Okay. So it's this desk. Um, I used it in my room from like age six to a couple years ago when I moved into a smaller room where it didn't fit. Um, but yeah, it's been in my family since my great uncle graduated from MIT in like the 60s to become an aeronautical engineer. And so using this desk is probably like one of the main things that made me want to be an engineer when I was younger, because I don't know, I could just like imagine being a scientist there and it just felt so cool to like have a desk to work on. Um, and yeah, I, I like how old it is and how much like family history it has. Um, and the connections 
I looked at specifically are the hinges that support the front flap. Um, the reactions there are forces in the X, Y, and Z, and then moments about the X and the Y, but it, it rotates on a Z axis. So. Great. Thank you, Colin. Now, I really never realized what a double entendre the connections project is. It's yeah, well done. I know. That's great. <laughs> um, doesn't the word double entendre mean, though, that the second meeting has to be somewhat sexual in nature? I don't. I didn't think so. I could be wrong. Anyone? I don't think so. I think an innuendo has to be. I don't know if it has to be, but, but I've never heard of an innuendo is used that way. I, I would agree with that. Okay, well, I'll look it up afterwards. I remember um, in high school, and I went to all girls Catholic high school, and I remember the like one of the really smart girls said some said some comment in English class, and it was definitely sexual in nature, and the and the nun commented on it being a double entendre. Anyway. That was my memory, but I'll look it up to find out. Okay, uh, Hyoji, you're on. <clears throat> All right, let me just pull this one up. Thanks. Do you need a little time? Uh, yes, please. Yes, okay. So Matthew, you're on next. And then Yoji, you'll be after Matthew. All right. Let me get this share screen. Ah, so I was correct. Double entendre. Daniel just looked it up. A word or phrase open to two interpretations, one usually risque. Okay, Matthew. <laughs> Great. Well, after that, um, I did um, mine on a Christmas tree and the various uh, religious um, symbols <laughs> behind Christmas and specifically the Christmas trees. Um, and for the whole statics portion of it, I did mine on the Christmas tree stand or the base um, that I have. And here's what it looks like. And um, just I guess I'll go into the statics first that this, um, this base, um, you know, just supports the weight of the tree. It's got a couple screws that hold the tree in place as it just rests there. Um, the reactions, there's nothing major going on. It's just got a normal force. Um, the legs are a little bit elevated when it attaches to the cylinder um, so that there's like a distributed load of the weight of the arms coming down. Um, but in my drawing, I just simplify that to a kind of center of mass weight. Mm. And then there's also normal um, forces acting upwards on each of the four legs. Um, and kind of the Christmas tree, the reason I did this Christmas tree um, was just the kind of the, the meaning of Christmas. And uh, I actually did some research on it and history.com has like a really in-depth uh, analysis of, of Christmas and all these things as symbolism. Um, and the, the reason we actually have these evergreen trees goes on um, really far back to like ancient Egypt and Rome when their polytheistic uh, religions would celebrate uh, the winter solstice as like hope of spring coming soon, you know, the end of the darkest days, uh, kind of the beginning of, of, you know, days getting longer and so on with that. And um, then after um, like Christianity started uh, um, kind of exploring out of uh, Israel, eventually these um, like these Romans who are practicing this wanted some kind of connection to celebrate like Jesus. And we never really knew exactly which day Jesus was born in, uh, although it was given that he was born in spring. Um, they decided to use uh, the winter solstice celebration to kind of tie those together as the symbolic symbolism um, that Jesus is for Christians as kind of the ending of the darkest days. Mm. Um, and so with that, then um, a famous uh, pastor Martin Luther uh, was out preaching or was preparing a sermon one day at night and he noticed in the winter he was just in awe of how the stars were listening through the evergreen trees and so then he went home and put a bunch of candles around his Christmas tree as a way um, to kind of re represent that kind of that just how beautiful that looked and so that is how today 
we um, we put lights around our Christmas tree to kind of resemble the stars glistening through evergreens uh, in a hope that the uh, darkest days are now behind us. Hey, Matthew, how long are the stands, the legs of the stand? Um, well, I know the total length is just shy of like 60 inches. Okay. Um, it's pretty big. It's for a, like a massive tree. What typically yeah. size tree do you get? Uh, my family, as you can kind of tell right here, we, we have this one room that's got a pretty tall roof. Uh, and so we try to get trees that are like somewhere between like 12 and like 14 feet. Wow. Tall. Okay. Wow. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Well, thanks, Matthew. Thanks for the history lesson. Okay. Um, Hyoji, you ready? Yes. Um. <laughs> All right, so my is memory with luggage. I chose this. I chose traveling luggage because I love traveling. I got this luggage from my dad a few years ago as a Christmas gift. The moment I received this luggage, I like traveled different places in the following year. I, I went to New York, Boston, Hawaii, like other places that I could go. The moment, um, this luggage is important for me because I've always used this luggage to travel this in the States ever since then. Uh, like when I'm packing things into this luggage, it's like I'm, I was packing like excitement and joy, but this year, like I couldn't go anywhere. Like we are, we can't travel. And then traveling like refreshes me and it reduces the stress that I got from school. and life uh that's why it's like really important to me and my mom was like um like she took everything out other day from my closet and then my luggage was like literally sitting here when you asked me to do this project and I was like oh luggage the traveling luggage is a perfect one to do it wow so this one there's only four wheels on the bottom so there's like a normal forces going up from each one and then uh, it's a, since it's a roller and then it has a weight going down, there's nothing much other than that going around. Mm. Well, thanks, Yoji. Yeah, and here's my picture from Hawaii. <laughs> oh, nice. Yeah. Okay, um, Elizabeth, you're up next. All right. So let me share my screen. Can you guys see that? Yep. Okay. Wow. Um, so I picked this little box that uh, my dad made me a long time ago um, when I was small. Well, I'm, I love the beach. I always have. So we would go all the time. We would bike ride like every weekend and I would be there for ever. Um, just and then I would end up picking some shells. And uh, so he made this little gift for me. And inside is also like little cute like things my nieces have made for me and stuff. So I just keep them in there. Um, they have, there's two connections right here. Um, can't see them, but yeah, so there's a connection, there's a reaction in the A, X, Y, and Z, and then a moment in the Y and Z. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it. Also, this was when I was little and I didn't know it was um, unethical and harmful to our environment. So please forgive little Liz. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> what I chose. <laughs> Thank you, Elizabeth. Thanks. Okay, Isaac. All right. Um, I chose, come up one second. Uh, I chose a luggage rack on, this was my second slash third motorcycle and I say that because my second third bike were the same bike um this was uh I chose this because um motorcycling is what got me out here 
uh, when I was 20, I got my license and I had, I had gone to school for a year and just decided that I didn't really have a good reason to be in school at the time. And, uh, and so I ended up getting my motorcycle license, saving some money and then riding from Vermont to Florida to see my grandmother back to Vermont and then across the country. That ended up being the last time I saw her as well because um, she died a year later. Um, but yeah, motorcycling is what got me here. And it's also uh, what led me in the direction of uh, mechanical engineering. So it's, uh, and, and teaching motorcycling was, motorcycling is what gave me the uh, freedom to, the financial freedom to actually go back to school. So in many ways, it's the only reason I'm here. Uh, so I chose, uh, because I like started riding with a touring focus, I chose the, I've always been drawn towards bikes that can take a lot of luggage. Uh, so I chose this luggage rack uh, on the back of my, uh, that was on the back of my old bike. And as you can see in this picture, I went on Craigslist and found the largest Pelican case I could and put that on top of it, uh, which it was, I don't think, I think it was well outside the load rating, but it's a Honda and they tend to have a pretty big margin of safety. Uh, so I never, I never actually tested it, but it had, um, I, I, I had my own connection system, but I added a, uh, uh, ratchet strap just in case. So the actual connections involved, um, were four pin, uh, four bolts. Uh, so there, I, I consider them fixed supports. There's one there, there, and then some just on the other side of that. And I am going to show the drawing cause I'm proud of it. Um, but these are, these are the four connections and they resist all, um, all reactions, uh, like all moments, all, uh, assuming I've tightened them down enough anyway, all moments and all uh, force, uh, force directions. Um, and then there was also the box. I didn't, I didn't mark this in the drawing, um, but when there was a box on it, it was attached via a um, fairly sketchy system that involved a couple uh, um, kind of loops of metal on the bottom of the box and then a rod passed through them that locked it down. Um, but yeah, it was quite sketchy. So I added in the ratchet straps just in case. And it was on there for a couple of years and it never came off. So, and it's uh, sitting right next to me. The box I still have, it's sitting right next to me in that corner covered in stickers. Yeah, that's my project. Thank you, Isaac. Okay, Bon. Bond's our last one. Oh, hey. I'm going to show you guys something pretty cool. <laughs> okay. Show my screen. Yeah, so I got uh, this watch for my birthday this year. I also have it on my screen. Yeah. Um, and it's a Vostok Amphibia. So during the beginning of the Cold War, the Soviet Union wanted to come up with a watch that could compete with the Rolex Submariner in the 50 Fathoms that the NATO countries had. And the Soviet Union had a lot of constraints going into it because one of the constraints that they had was they didn't want to copy any of the patents that any of the NATO countries had because they didn't want to pay the NATO countries. And also they want to show that a communist country can do anything better than any capitalist country could at the time. So they, in 1967, the Soviet Union delegated two, um, two designers, these two, to come up with a, a watch that will be better than a Rolex. And they came up with the Vostok Amphibia, which is this. And it's really awesome. It can survive. It was rated at 200 meters at the time. Uh, but since then, a YouTuber put it inside like a pressure chamber and it only failed at 836 meters, which is really big because the deepest dive anyone has done was like 330 meters. Um, it can survive intense uh, heating. And also in 1975, this guy right here, Georgi Grechko, was a Soviet uh, astronaut and he took it with him to space for 29 days in a, a Soviet space station. Um, that's pretty much all I have to say about the watch itself. Uh, for the connections, I was mostly just looking at the bezel and the crown and they both resist forces in the X, Y, and Z direction. 
uh, and they both resist two moments, but this one is free to move in one uh, axis and the crown rotates in the other. And that's also one of the two factories that they're made in, and they're still made in the same way that they are today. Yeah. And the Vostok that I have is actually on a NATO strap, which is kind of ironic. Um, <laughs> that's pretty much it. Thank it's you. It's interesting, the woman's last name, one of the designers is Bulova, and I looked it up to see because there are watches, Bulova watches, but Bulova watches are B-U. L -L yeah, this is Bulova. Yeah. Yeah, so that was kind of interesting. Thank you, Bon. Yep. Okay, so um, there's one thing I want to show you from when you guys just are talking about. Well, first, thanks for uh, sharing a little bit of your your live. Yeah. What? You forgot me, I think. Yeah, and I didn't Miles. either. Yeah. I'm sorry, Miles. Uh Okay, Miles. Miles. Miles is turn. It's my turn. Oh wait, um, I forgot Danny too. I'm sorry. Okay, Miles. Yeah. Um, my Wi-Fi is a little bit choppy, everybody. So bear with me here. Um. So just like Angel, I did my guitar mount too and um not mine sp uh, specifically because we have a lot in our house but um yeah it's uh special to me because this is kind of what has occupied my life since i stopped playing sports and um kind of just challenged my thinking in a whole new way that um has been really fun and so Similarly to Angel's, I have two screw connections, I call them, um, because technically I didn't think they resisted a moment that's like um, uh, that, that I called in the Z direction. Um, but uh, this is my drawing because I'm really uh, proud of it, so I want to show it. And um, it doesn't resist in the Z axis about here. So I didn't show that um, per support. But um, yeah. Okay. So that's what I think. Thanks, Miles. Sorry about that. And Danny, that's I fine. skipped from Daniel Hall to Hyoji for some reason. Yes, good morning. Uh, let me just show this one. I chose my project to be around a little guy I'll call Ducky Dude. And that's him in 3D, 3D paint. And um, this is him in, in real life. Uh -huh. And he, he was a gift from my first trip to Santo Tomas. Guanajuato, Mexico, where my dad grew up, from my cousin uh, Esteban, and he, and he was the first, um, he began a habit of collecting plush toys to commemorate my trips to certain places, or to like uh, trips that I've had, right, and um, just holding him in my hands, he's a lot smaller than I remember, right, yeah. and I, it's just something I do now, where um, I collect uh, plush toys of where I've gone and where I've been, you know, whether it's like a long time ago from Las Vegas to more recently of Austin, Texas and some conventions I've been to. And um, since he hangs from a su uh, fixed support, he has moments and mm. reactions in all directions. Yeah, so that's a ducky dude. I mean, look at the sideways hat. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Thank you, Danny. Yeah, thank you. Very good drawing. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Okay. So um, thank you very much again for sharing uh, a little bit of your lives with all of us. I was thinking this might be a good project to do midway in the semester when we just are about to introduce connections 
So not necessarily draw it up yet, but think about something that's important to you that has connections in it. And that'll make us meet each other more since uh, in the remote setting, it's difficult for us to establish stronger bonds. Anyway, um, I wanted to show something. Um, okay, you could see what I'm holding up here, right? Is this a, is this a truss or a frame? frame. It's a frame. Um, does it have a two-force member? Yep. Yeah, CD is a two-force member. I could replace it with a bar here. But this one's a three-force member. It has forces here, here, and here. Okay? So what I wanted to point out is, as a whole structure, because I saw a common, um, a common thread in some of the, the, the reactions at the supports that you mentioned in your project, this whole structure together is static. So the combination of the two members and its one, two, three connections and its external load together balance out its st in static equilibrium. But when we look at finding out the reactions at each support, we are indeed looking at each support. Even though as a static member, as a static structure rather, nothing's gonna move at B, we are reminded that B is a pin connection. It can with, withstand, resist a force in the X and a force in the Y, but it is allowed to spin. Even though when you look at the whole structure, because it's in static equilibrium, it's not spinning. But I think you would all agree that if you were to take these members apart, you would put a force in the X and a force in the Y here, and because ordinarily, if this was not a two force member, you would put in a CX and a CY and a DX and a DY, but because it's a two force member, you know that these four unknowns reduce to one and it goes straight through with CD. The reason I'm pointing this out is I think in some, uh, in some of your situations, you had pin connections and you said that it wasn't gonna move so therefore it could resist a moment in the Z, but that's not true. When you look at an individual connection, you look at what that individual connection can resist without all the other stuff on it. So it could resist a force in the X, it could resist a force in the Y, but it can spin in the B, uh, in the Z, meaning that the, the reactions at the support are only a BX and BY. There's no a B, no B moment. So some of you put something up like you looked at a screw. And even though a, there are, maybe if you have a picture frame that you hang in the wall and you have two screws, yes, you're correct that this picture frame is not going to spin. But a screw does allow a spinning force, right? I mean, does allow a spinning moment. So if you have um, a picture frame hanging the wall by two screws, each screw could only resist a force in the X and a force in the Y. The, the, the um, screw would not be considered a fixed support because it can actually do a moment in the, in the Z. Does everybody get that? I'm gonna stop sharing and just make sure that you're comfortable that when you look at reactions at supports, you have to look at each individual support and put what it could resist on its own. You don't look at the whole picture frame and say, oh, it's not gonna spin. So therefore there's a, a, a moment reaction at, the, at a screw. Now, if you told me in the words that the screw was a fixed support, I'll just make the assumption that it was a fixed support and then it should have a force in the X, force in the Y in a moment, but you know that a screw can turn, right? That's the only um, issue I saw in the descriptions, but otherwise it was good. Yeah, as a reflection of the project, I mean, I think it was a great culmination of, of our efforts in the class and using many of the, the skills and tools, possibly one of the most challenging parts of the class. Yeah. Um, was determining the connections in some of these projects. It's very complex. It's, you know, this, the simplistic world of the set of five or six connections that we learn in lab doesn't translate perfectly to, you know, a screw mounting a plate to the wall or some of these other examples. It's, it was very challenging to translate 
uh, which yeah. is a good thing. Yeah. And I mean, in all our engineering projects, we uh, in all our engineering classes, we have a project. Now, this statics project would have been way bigger. You would have been working in teams. You would have had to do the analysis. And I simplified it somewhat because our lives are kind of crazy right now. Um, but yeah, when you do the real world project, um, when you do a real world application, it is more complicated. And you have to make it a lot of assumptions because you always have more unknowns than numbers of equations as I'm imagining you had the indeterminate determinant lab on Friday. Right? You had the lab on Friday. So that was Absolutely. Rob Rob um, tying in the course to some real real life situations where we have to make assumptions. Okay, well it's 1051 and we did finish in time. I'm willing to stay on a little bit if uh, anybody needs me, if you have any questions. Um, and yeah, okay, great. Joanne, and can you I confirm the rest of the calendar for this class? Like sure. how many more sessions do we have? Sure. Yeah, what are we doing let's, Wednesday? Uh, okay, let's hang on a second. Thursday. Because our final is way out. It's like the end of next week, right? Yeah. Yeah. Hang on a second. Okay. I'm going to share my screen in the middle minute. When I was a student, I really hated when teachers taught up to the day of the final. I remembered having teachers teach something the last day of class, and then the material was going to be on the final a few days away. And I just thought that was so unfair just because of just because they weren't organized enough to get it together. So I didn't really appreciate that. So I always make sure that I end earlier. Um, however, this semester I did er end way earlier because Carl, Rob, and I decided not to teach one of the topics, which it'll be covered in strength and material. So we ended an extra week earlier. So let's take a look at the schedule. What's mm -hmm. the topic? Um, uh, Moment of inertia. Oh, moment right? of inertia. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. So, <laughs> yeah. So uh, today uh, is the eighth, and we did the project presentations on the tenth. The first part of the tenth, I'm going to review centroids and center of mass, and center of um, center of gravity. This shouldn't be volume. Center of gravity, because that you learned on your own through my video. So I want to make sure everybody's comfortable with that. So we'll do a review of that. We'll also do a final exam, just course review. We'll do an overall review of the whole course. And um, we could go over any of those final exam, multiple choice questions you have. They will be, this, my solutions will be posted tonight, but it'll be late. And then um, also I wanna get some suggestions from you on, since next fall is supposed to be online. And I wanna just talk, mention that to you. You know, we as faculty members in departments have to set up our schedules for next fall for the worst case scenario of it being online, but it's possible that we will be in person next fall. We really don't know, but spring is still online. So I wanted to get some suggestions from you guys on teaching statics online for next, next week. Um, then on Friday, we have a lab day from eight to 10 and Thursday, after I do my review, I will check in with you on finding out what kind of review you want to do on that Friday. You might want more multiple choice questions. So I'll need to know what it is. And if you have some comments already, you could send it to me because Rob and I are still, we're really leaving this lab open to what your suggestions are. And then um, finals week is the week of December 15th. And if we gave the final during our um, uh, statics lecture time, the final would begin at seven in the morning and that's really a horrendous time to have a final. So we chose the final exam period as the lab period. So the final is the Friday of finals week, which is nine to 12. But Rob, Rob and I are still in, um, are thinking about making it asynchronous. We haven't decided for sure whether you want to do it at your own leisure or then, um, but we still have to decide. And it, right now it's set up for that Friday. 
okay, let me stop sharing and see if I need to field any questions. But those of you who want to go can can leave now. Okay, and what that covered I'll, what I was asking. So thanks. Okay, mm -hmm. I'll stop recording now. So if you have any questions, and Gerardo, uh, stay on.